actually integrate these three dimensions. And so we were asked, uh, this is a team of people, my uh, colleague uh, in Canada, Marcia McKenzie, she's a professor at the University of Saskatchewan, and then there were several other colleagues from the Nissan Network that came together and designed a study that involves 10 countries, two from each UNESCO region. So in Asia, it included Japan and the Republic of Korea. It included Lebanon and Morocco. It included uh, uh, Portugal and Sweden. It included Kenya and Rwanda. And it included, uh, what else, uh, Latin America, Mexico, and Costa Rica. And the choice of these countries had to do in part that they are committed to ESD or GCD, that they have strong commitments that we should expect to find in their documents. And so we wanted to analyze, as it were, the official documents that countries put forward. So we collected from each country about 30 different documents. They range from the national laws of the countries to policy documents, to specialized ESD and GCD documents. And the vast majority of documents that we looked at were actually the subject syllabi, the, the actual uh, intended topics and themes that are included in different subjects. It looks like we're almost there. Great. Well, you know, eventually things work out. Uh, so um, this involved quite a lot of, first of all, the collection of documents. Here you can see all the studies. By the way, we've separately also looked at the country of Oman, uh, which is a separate uh, uh, a study. Most of the findings from the analysis that we've just completed for Oman are very similar to the analysis that we have found in the 10 country study. So essentially, we are trying to determine the extent to which the official documents, including the curricular documents, integrate to some to different extents these three learning dimensions, the cognitive, the social-emotional, and the behavioral. These are our definitions that we've been using, and this is all based on this argument that the most effective way of moving forward in ESD and GSED is by including all three dimensions. And as you can see, about 5% of the documents that we looked at are national laws, 15% are strategic documents and policies, 10% are curricular frameworks, 7% are national ESD and GCD documents, and as I indicated, more than 60% of the documents were the actual subject syllabi. So we were interested in looking both at the range of different documents that obviously have a different position vis-a-vis -vis the country, but we were also interested in looking at four different levels of the education system. So we looked at pre-primary, mainly the year before uh, the beginning of primary education. We looked at one year of primary, which I believe was uh, year uh, grade four, uh, one year of, of lower secondary, and one year of upper secondary, to get a sense of whether or not the emphases on these three learning dimensions change as you move up the education ladder. And in terms of the coding of the documents, we first of all looked at the key uh, themes under ESD and GCD, which you can see here uh, listed from z uh, 1 to, uh, to 8. Uh, number 7 is basically this argument that uh, this should be an integrated uh, three pillars approach to ESD. And then there were some uh, themes that were, didn't really fit into this categorization that we used in the category 8. And then the, 30, uh, the, the learning dimension codes are here. So in terms of the actual analysis, we have to do the following. Number one, we have to identify the official documents in these 10 countries that uh, were uh, in these different categories. We then have to read them. We're talking about documents in seven different languages. We have to read them in the, in the national languages. And we have to identify content that is related to education for sustainability, for sustainable development, and global citizenship education. And then in looking at that text that is related to ESD or GCD, we determine using particular keywords, is the emphasis on cognitive, social, emotional, and behavioral. And the same sentence can actually have all three dimensions. The same 
let's say, uh, a, a small uh, text can have all three dimensions. This is not one or the other or the other. Uh, these are not mutually exclusive. They can be intertwined. And you can see in just a minute, I'll give you some examples. So as I've indicated, we looked at four different grade levels. And uh, we chose different subjects in the sciences, the social sciences, the language arts, and then particular required subjects that are related to uh, ESD and GCD. In general, we chose uh, subject syllabi from up to 10 different subjects in the curriculum of these countries. Here are some examples of the actual uh, documents and how we coded them. So in Japan, this is from the Ministry of Education, Commentary on Courses of Education for Kindergarten from 2018. When acting, think about the feelings of friends and people immediately around. Sympathize with others' feelings. Reflect on your actions from others' point of view. Mm -hmm. So this is a sentence in an official document, which we're now coding on these three dimensions. And notice that we've, we've coded all three dimensions. Cognitive is around thinking and reflecting. Social emotional is around sympath sympathize, respect, and feelings. And behavioral dimension of acting. So this is an example where in the same sentence you see all three dimensions. In Kenya, the provision, this is from the Basic Education Act of 2013, the provision of basic education shall be guided by the following values and principles. K, imparting relevant knowledge, skills, attitudes, and values to learners to foster the spirit and sense of patriotism, nationhood, unity of uh, purpose, mm -hmm. togetherness, and respect. So here again, we coded all three dimensions, the cognitive because of the mention of knowledge, the behavioral in terms of skills, and because there's mention of attitudes, this is social emotional. So this is meant to give you an example. These are examples from Mexico and Portugal. So we went through systematically 263 documents looking for uh, mentions of ESD and GCD and trying to tease out these different dimensions. And the point is trying to figure out to what extent are countries putting more or less emphasis on these three learning dimensions. This has not been done before. This is a fairly innovative study in the sense of this kind of analysis. So here's one of the first findings. And what you see here is that as we move up the educational ladder from pre-primary to upper secondary, the proportion of references of the cognitive type increase from 29% to half. So as we move up the ladder, the emphasis on more cognitive learning increases. And inversely, or conversely, the emphasis on social and emotional learning decreases from a half to 27%. There's almost a, a kind of a, a corresponding relationship. With respect to behavioral, it is only about 20%. It goes up a little bit. It's still relatively marginal, quote unquote, relative to the other major dimensions, which are the cognitive and the social emotional. This makes sense. One of the things when you're a social scientist, when you do an analysis, it's a little bit uncertain what you're going to find. There's a lot of, uh, uh, when I look at these findings, I go, it makes sense. The more the stakes become higher, uh, and you move toward matriculation exams and high stakes examinations at the end of upper secondary, the more emphasis countries place on cognitive learning and less on social emotional. And it, yeah. you would almost expect that. We, it was part of our hypothesis. So the fact that we found this in the empirical findings laid, uh, gave us some uh, sense of uh, validation, let's say, in the kind of analysis that we carried out. However, countries differ. Not all countries follow the same pattern. Mm -hmm. So here you have each of the different countries from Costa Rica to Sweden. Here is the relative emphasis on the three different dimensions. Uh, uh, and you can see that, for example, in Costa Rica, Japan, uh, Mexico, uh, certainly in Sweden, there's much more emphasis on the cognitive. This is over all four grade levels. And uh, by contrast, in Kenya and in Lebanon, in Morocco, and to some extent in the Republic of Korea, there's greater emphasis on the social-emotional. 
Behavioral was never very strong in the, in the only case where we see an emphasis on the behavioral, not the only case, but the case where it's most dramatically emphasized is Japan, is Japan. Uh, so, uh, uh, and to some extent, Portugal. So you can see that although the general pattern that we mentioned just previously is quite strong, each, there, there are very different profiles to different countries, and we're trying to, you'll see maybe by the end of my presentation, why some of these patterns exist. One of the things that we tried to determine was precisely this idea, are countries at least providing a certain, pr pr in other words, to what extent are these three learning dimensions actually present? in the different subject curricula and in the different documents. And we arbitrarily defined it as if it, at least 15% of the uh, items that we coded are making reference to a particular dimension, that means that that dimension is at least in, included or uh, present to some significant degree. So here what you have is that in those countries, for example, in Japan and the Republic of Korea that are pointed out in green, that means that at each of these levels of the education system, the three dimensions are emphasized at least at 15% or higher. In other words, all three dimensions are prevalent. All three dimensions are given at least 15% of the analysis that we did. And Japan and Korea are the only two countries in which we see that across all four levels of the education system. Mm -hmm. Costa Rica, for example, is also uh, in, uh, in three, mm -hmm. also in Rwanda. Uh, you can see that at the upper secondary level, or the, uh, the secondary education, mm -hmm. there are only half of the countries in which all three dimensions are prevalent. Uh, which dimension is missing is uh, often the either the socio-emotional or the behavioral. Often the cognitive is quite prevalent as we move up the education system. Um, the other thing that we find is that some of the, uh, keep in mind that most of the analysis was on the subject curricula. The curricula themselves tend to be much more cognitive, cognitively organized or focused, uh, a little bit less so on the social-emotional and very little on the behavioral. A little bit, uh, some differences mainly in the national laws. Many of the national laws make reference to values that need to be inculcated, and so that's a reference to social-emotional learning, which is one of the reasons why it's much more prevalent uh, at that level, although the number of documents that we actually analyze is this fairly uh, small, okay? Uh, this is an important finding in that here you see that these two areas, the social sciences and the natural sciences, in which a lot of ESD and GCD learning takes place, are predominantly cognitively oriented. Mm -hmm. About half of all the references in the documents that are related to the social sciences, which includes social studies, history, geography, civics, and citizenship education, and the natural sciences, everything from general science to uh, biology, chemistry, and so forth, those subject areas tend to be more cognitively focused and less emphasis on the social emotional and very little emphasis on the behavior. By contrast, in language and in some of the other required, which is the GCD and ECD material, we see a much greater emphasis on the social emotional. So one of the things that emerges, and this is perhaps one of the reasons uh, that we see this in some of the, the national profiles, is that in those countries in which ESD and GCD is embedded either exclusively or primarily in the social sciences and the natural sciences, it tends to have a strong cognitive uh, dimension and less a social, emotional, or behavioral dimension. So as you'll see, one of our conclusions is that if countries are serious about trying to have a more balanced, holistic approach to the teaching of ESD and GCD, one of the things that they need to be uh, examining is to what extent do they integrate uh, social emotional learning and behavioral learning in their social science and science subject areas. Okay, that, that clearly comes from uh, this uh, finding here. Um, in general, most uh, about two-thirds of all the references were GSEG references. Only one-third were ESD references. Overall, in terms of the countries, we see much more 
uh, uh, recognition of, let's say, issues around cultural diversity and tolerance, uh, peace and nonviolence, which is not to say these things are not integrated, but in terms of the way in which we classify these topics, these are more uh, you know, uh, global citizenship topics, and the environmental topics are the ones that received less uh, references, at least in terms of our analysis. Again, these are pr national profiles, and they make sense in part, for example, the Republic of Korea, which as we know, and I'm sure we'll hear from my colleague uh, uh, Utak Chung, is obviously a place where global citizenship education is very strong and very much emphasized. And in fact, you can see that if you look at the dark blue and the blue and the other blue, that takes up about three quarters of all the references are G7 related references. By contrast, in Sweden and in Portugal, there's much more emphasis on the ESD side than there is on the G7 side. So we can see that the country's relative commitment to either global citizenship or ESD also is reflected a little bit in the kinds of references that we found to those in the materials that we looked at. Um, in general, we see, interestingly, that the education for sustainable development documents or emphases tend to be more cognitively focused. And again, this is reinforced that they often are taught in the social sciences or in the sciences where the cognitive dimension is disproportionately emphasized. So one of the challenges for people who are involved in teaching and learning in uh, education for sustainable development is how can they develop uh, uh, the kind of pedagogical practices and also the kinds of syllabi, and we didn't look at textbooks, but you can imagine also thinking about this in terms of textbooks, that would incorporate a social, emotional, or a behavioral dimension in addition to the cognitive. So here are my conclusions from this study. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure how I'm doing for time. Hopefully not too bad. Patterns vary. Uh, the relative emphasis on these three dimensions uh, is very much dependent on uh, which countries we look at, what kind of commitments they have, either to ESD or, or global citizenship, while uh, the importance of a holistic learning uh, approach, uh, really uh, there's room for countries to reconsider the ways in which they embed ESD or GCD as a cross-cutting idea in their subject curricula, because these are often related to the kind of learning emphases Versus, uh, in terms of cognitive, social, emotional, and uh, behavioral. And in fact, as we've shown here, much of the differences uh, between uh, some of the countries are related to the relative, the ways in which, or the subject domains in which ESD or GCD is embedded, because these tend to have uh, uh, more emphasis on the cognitive, in the case of the social sciences and the uh, uh, natural sciences on the one hand, and other uh, uh, areas, let's say, like uh, uh, specialized ESD and GCD subjects or the language arts, where we see greater emphasis on the social, emotional, and the behavioral. Uh, this recommendation here is a more uh, is not really related to our findings, but obviously UNESCO is very committed to whole school approaches in which we would expect all three dimensions also to have uh, some reflection if it is a whole school approach to trying to embed. Uh, education for Sustainable Development, it would also have this kind of holistic uh, uh, approach to it or, or framing. And finally, it's important to keep in mind, we looked only at the intended, the official intended curriculum. We did not look at what happens inside classrooms. And we didn't look at textbooks. Uh, these would be very important things to look at, to, what, to, to look at in the future in terms of an analytical point of view. Uh, to what extent are the, the kinds of patterns that emerge from our work, would they also obtain if we analyze the textbooks of these countries and try to observe uh, pedagogical practices inside the classroom in some of the uh, classes or courses in which GSED and ESD are uh, very strong. So these are some of the, the key uh, uh, findings from the 10 country. Again, I'm very happy to share with you the technical report if you send me an email uh, subsequent to this. And the UNESCO publication is forthcoming. Hopefully it will be out uh, in the